me to speak tonight and God had said some things to me and and one thing that really stood out that he really said was we must obey you know Marquis sp- talked a little bit about dedication last Sunday Michael touched a little bit and God said we must obey and we're going to get into the word right away we're going to go to first Samuel chapter 13, and we'll start at verse 5. You know, as a kid growing up, when you hear obey, sometimes you think, oh, man, we don't like that word. And a lot of times when you get, when you, when you get older and you think about, okay, I have to obey my spouse. I have to submit. A lot of times, a lot of people don't like to hear that. But we, as the body of Christ, must obey God. We must listen to his instruction and obey what he has told us to do. So 1 Samuel chapter 13, we're going to start at verse 5. It says, the Philistines gathered together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and the people as the sand which was on the seashore in a multitude. And they came up and encamped with Michmash and the east of Beth Haven. Keep going. When the men of Israel saw that they were in anger for the in danger, sorry, for the people were distressed. Then the people hid in caves and thickets and rocks and holes and in pits. And some of the Hebrews crossed over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was still in Gilgal, and all the people followed, followed him trembling. Then he waited seven days, according to the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. If we stop right there for a moment. See, God had told Samuel to tell Saul to wait because he wanted him to make a burnt off. They, wanted, they were supposed to make a burnt offering to, for, to God for him to help them. And people began to scatter because they saw all the different people they were about to go up against. And a lot, how many times do you know that when things get hard, you often want to run? When things get difficult, you want to, you, oh, I'm going to follow the crowd. I'm up out of here. And that's our, our, that's our mindset. We, we just want to run. When things get tough, then we're ready just to go, to move out the way. And sometimes when God's telling you something, no matter what's going on around you, you have to stay put. I remember in 2000, uh, I can't think of the exact year, but I know it was seven years ago, uh, just about because I was pregnant with Mariana. And we, at our job, at my old job I was at, they, we had some change in supervisors and we had different supervisors standing in for the meantime before we got a new one. And there was a lot of chaos, a lot of different things going on. And so I, I began to pray, and I said, God, I don't want to be here anymore. And he said, just wait. And I said, but God, I don't want to be here anymore. I kept saying, I don't want to be here. And I said, okay, God, if you, if you want me to wait, I'll wait. But God, I really don't want to be here. He said, okay. And I was put on bed rest. So I wasn't there dealing with it. So he did answer the prayer somewhat. But at the same time, I still had to wait. Why? Because after I had the baby, I had to go back. And I said, okay, God, I really don't want to be here. The team was different. There was a lot of different people that left. There was still the, the same, some of the same people trying to stick it through and trying to figure things out. But I was like, God, this is hard. It's different. It's, you know, there's so much going on. And me, I wanted to flee just like all those people. Why? Because I felt, oh, it's too hard. There's too much going on. There's too much pressure. But a lot of times you have to obey God. And it may be hard. You may feel like you're all by yourself. You may not understand. You're like, God, there's so much confusion. And he's saying, just wait. Just wait. A lot of times when we get put in situations and it's, and it's uncomfortable, you're like, well, I'm not married. I can leave. Or, oh, it, things are not working out. We're just going to have to go our separate ways. When things get difficult and tough, we seem to bail out. And a lot of times God is saying, just wait. Sometimes God will give us instructions just to hang on in there for a little bit. 
and it's hard for us, and we don't know how to, how to handle that. But God wants us to obey. I think we had just read verse 8, so we'll go to verse 9. So Saul, Saul said, bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened, as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him, that he might greet him. So see, he, if he would have just waited a little bit longer, his help was on the way. A lot of times we get too antsy and we say, okay, I'm going to handle this my way. I'm going to do this right now because I don't want to wait any longer. But if we would just wait, if we would just wait, we can hear God speaking to us. A lot of times he already told us to wait and we don't want to hear that. So we're, oh man, God, I'm answering. You know, let me just do what I know to do best. And that's to go find a new job or that's to go get in a different relationship. Let me just keep going. God's saying, I got the one for you, but I need you just to wait. But God, I think, I think this is the one. We're just going to, and God's saying, just wait, just wait. We have to listen to what God's saying to us. Now we're in a time where God wants us to obey. As hard as it may seem, even though you feel like you're all by yourself, we must obey. Next verse, please. And Samuel said, what have you done? Saul said, to, Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me, that I did not, and you did not come within days appointed that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash. Then I saw, then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal, and I have not made a supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled to offer a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord, your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel for forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord sought for himself a man after his own heart. The Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, but you have not kept the, the Lord's command for you. We get too hasty. When God's telling us to wait on him, he's already given us instruction, and he's already said, I will do it, but you have to wait for my timing. When we hear someone say, I got to wait, we don't like that. And if we would just wait on God, if we would just listen to what he has to say and wait until his appointed time, then things would go a lot smoother. But when we try and do things on our own, then things begin to not go the right way. In that verse, he said, I felt compelled to offer the, offer, offer the burnt sacrifice. A lot of times we feel compelled to take matters into our own hands, and that's not what we should be doing. We have to stop moving in our emotions and our feelings and say, God, okay, not my flesh, but let me obey. Help me to submit to what you want me to do. Help me just to say, okay, not my will, but yours be done. It's going to be hard, and God, I need your strength. God, I need your help. And we have to continue just to trust in God. See, God had riches for him. God wanted to bless him, but because he acted hastily, because he felt like, oh, I'm about to be by myself, so let me just do this on my own. We have to remember that we're not alone. We have to remember that God is with us. So a few key points that God wanted me to point out to you. Number one, when times get hard, don't run from God, but run to God. Jonah thought it was okay to run the opposite way instead of going to Nineveh. And he found himself in some trouble. And us, oftentimes, when we see something that God wants us to do, we may try and step back. We try and act like we don't hear him and say, oh, God, you're not speaking. I can't hear you. Uh, he's speaking, but we don't want to hear what he has to say. So we have to remember to, when times get hard, don't run from God but run to God. 
Number two, when you feel like you're all alone, know that God's with you. Because this word says, lo, I'm with you always, even until the ends of the earth. So when you feel like you're drowning, you're sinking, know that he's right there holding you afloat. Know that he's right there stepping into the situation when you're frustrated at your job and you're like, God, why do you have me here? He has you there for a reason. When you're, when you're like, God, I'm going through school and it's getting harder, it's getting tougher, he has you going through it for a reason. So that way you can pave the way for your children and let them know it may get hard and may be tough, but I persevered. I finished the course and I was able to complete what God set for me to do. When you feel like you're all alone at home, Louise, and you're like, man, I just need a break a little bit of time. Know that God is right there with you, helping you along the way, giving you that strength to continue to smile, giving you that joy to continue to have something to, to sing about. Know that he's with you. Jane, when you're like, okay, I have this and this that needs to get paid, and you're keeping a positive attitude, that's awesome because your children are watching that. Your children's children are watching that. Because they're like, man, grandma's always smiling, always talking about how good God is and how he's, how he's making a way. That's going to make them want to know who this God is. That's going to want to make them seek for themselves who it is that you worship, who it is that you're giving all this praise to. But we have to continue that, to know that we're not alone. We're not alone. Number three, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. If he would have just waited a little bit longer, he said, oh, man, he's supposed to be back in this amount of days, and he's not here, so, man, I'm about to just do this. If he would just wait on God, then it'll happen. A lot of times we, we're too anxious, and we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. But in that waiting process, is when our faith is going to be tested and tried. In that waiting process is when he's going to build that character in you. In that waiting process, we need to be praying. We need to be fasting. We need to be crying out to God and saying, God, give me the strength. A lot of times when you're waiting on God, it feels like you're fasting and you're by yourself. And then all this temptation comes all around you. That's when people want to put a whole spread of a buffet right in front of you. Do you want some? And if you would just wait just wait. We have to learn not to be anxious. A lot of times we say, okay, I want to have this go-getter mentality. But God's saying, yes, I want you to have that too. But you have to wait for the right timing. You have to wait and, and allow me to instruct you to do the right thing. Not just be like, okay, I'm going to go get it and I'm going to do what I want to do. No, God, show me the way. Help me to have the plans that you want me to have. Help me not to be so quick to do what I want to do, but to allow you to order my steps. God, I still need you to order my steps. Even though I want to be a go-getter, be a go-getter, help me to have the mentality to trust you first. To trust you first. And with us going through different things, a lot of times we, we get weary. Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good. For in the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. When we're anxious and we decide just to, I'm done with this. I'm not trying anymore. We're too anxious. We got weary and we gave up before we allowed God to move. We need to give up on, on trying to do things our own way and do things hastily but to allow God just to move. God, in your timing, your timing is the best timing. God, I'm just going to let you do what you want to do. You know, it was, it was interesting. God reminded me that when I was, um, I had got out of school and I had moved down here and I started going to school down here and I was living with my sister. And at that time, you know, I was, I was 18, almost 19, and I had, I was like, okay, I was you know, dating different guys, and it, it wasn't feeling right. And finally, I said, you know what? I'm going to save myself for God. I want to have a relationship with God, a real intimate relationship with God, and I want to save myself for God. So I'm going to make out a letter of what I want in a mate. 
And because I waited and waited and began to pray and said, no, you know, I'm just waiting on God. So when I met Marquise, I was waiting on God. And so I was like, yep, we're friends. And that's all it was going to be was friends. And then over time, I was like, man, he is actually kind of cute. And his personality, yeah, okay. But I was waiting on God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was waiting on God. And because I wasn't hasty and was like, you know what? I'm young. Everyone's talking about people getting married. I should just go and get married. And I should just do it. No, I would have been in the wrong relationship. It wasn't the right timing. But because I waited until God said, okay, this is who you need to date. Because I, I would, people would ask me for my number. I was like, nope. Nope, I'm not giving out my number. I'm not taking your number. I'm sorry. And I don't even want to be friends. I'm, no offense. You're probably a good person. But no, I, 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 I don't want to have any friends of the opposite sex right now. Why? Because I was focused on God. I was waiting on God. And, and I had to really just really focus in. A lot of times we get so distracted. We allow different distractions to come. And they're like, oh, okay, maybe this is the one. This is who God said I should be with. And if you don't hear from God, don't move. If you don't allow God to speak to you and you really hear from him and have him confirm that word, don't move. Because you don't want to step out and say, okay, th that was God. This is what I was supposed to do. I had someone say, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I said, are you sure? Did you pray about it? They're like, well, God didn't say nothing to me, so I think it's good. If God is not saying anything to you, then don't move. Just wait on him. Just wait on God. The next scripture I want to go to is 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23. So 1 Samuel 15, starting at verse 22, it says, So Samuel said, said, Has the Lord as great delight in a burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to, be, or behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, than to heed, or sorry, than, or, and to heed than fat of rams. Next verse. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and adultery. Idolatry, sorry. But you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has or he uh, he also has rejected you from being king. So when I take from this is Obedience is better than sacrifice. We must obey. If we don't get anything else from this, we must obey what God is telling us to do. You see, the, it, God reminded me of the lady who came to the prophet and said, okay, they're getting ready to take my boys. And he said, what do you have at home? She's like, well, I just have some oil, but that's it. But they're getting ready to take my boys. And he said, go home, get those jars, ask your neighbors for oil and fill up the, or sorry, ask your neighbors for jars and fill up the jars with the oil. If she would have just said, you know what, let me go to a different prophet because I don't like what he's saying. Or you know what, we're just going to go home and we're going to pack up and we're going to run from here because we're out. We're not doing this. That doesn't even make sense. We only got a little bit of oil. What are we asking for all these jars for? But because she was obedient... Didn't care what the neighbors were thinking. Why are they asking for all these jars? What is going on? Because in the natural, that doesn't even make any sense. You're asking for jars for what? But she sent the boys out, and she was obedient. And as she began to pour, she's, give me another one. And she's pouring. Give me another one. And she's pouring. And she only had a little bit of oil at home. So if you think about it, she's like, I got a little bit of oil, and we're asking for jars from all these different people. This makes no sense. But because she obeyed, 
and begin to allow God to work in her situation, he, he was able to move. We must obey. When things don't look natural, look right in the natural, things don't always seem like the right thing to do. But when we begin to obey God, he can move. We must obey. We are in the natural. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. And we get weary saying, God, I'm by myself. God, I don't know how to do this. But God's saying, I got you. Just listen. Just listen. And if we would just listen to God's voice and obey his command, then he'll make everything fall into place. Me thinking in the natural, a lot of things don't seem like they make sense. A lot of times I'm like, how is that going to work? This, we begin to panic. We get anxious. And we don't know how it's going to happen. But when we begin to allow God to renew our minds, God, I don't know where the money's coming from. God, I don't know how you're going to move in this situation. But I know you are more than able. I know you are going to touch like you, only you can. I know you're going to bring peace like only you can. We must allow him to renew our minds. We have to allow him to renew our minds. I'm going to look at it, the same verse in the um, New Living Translation. It says, instead, let the spirit renew your mind and your thoughts and your attitudes. Put on the new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So we need to shake free of all the old thoughts, all our old thinking, and allow God to renew it. Allow God to say, God, help me to have the right mind that's in you. Help me to think the right thoughts. Help me to trust you and to know that you have what's best for me. Even when I don't see what's going to happen at the end of the tunnel, even when I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, God, I trust you. God, I believe. God, I know that if I obey, I submit to your will and to your way, you're going to move in this situation. We must allow him to move. We must obey. And going back to those three points one more time and say it one more time before I have it closed. It says, number one, when times get hard, we must run to God instead of run, running from God. Number two, when you feel alone, know that God is with you. Number three, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious to try and do things on your own. Saul could have reigned even longer. But because he saw the men begin to scatter, he got a little fearful. He got in his flesh. He allowed doubt to set in, and he began to get anxious. And I'm sure they were speaking like, man, what are we going to do? They're panicking. How are we going to handle, how are we gonna handle these, this army that we're about to attack? If there's nobody with us, what are we going to do? How is God going to move? We haven't even did the, off the burnt offering. There's no one here. He's not here. How are we going to do it? And so Saul said, okay, let me just try and do it my own way. Let me just do it. When you're, you have to realize when you're in a situation, you're saying me, 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 that's the wrong thinking. Say, God, I don't know how this is going to work. God, I don't know what's going to happen in this situation, but you, we want you to step in, God. We need you to move in this marriage. We need you to move in our children. We need you to move on our job. God, I don't want to be anywhere in the forefront, but God, I need you to move. God, I will be a vessel that you work through, but I need you to move, not me, not my attitude. A lot of times I find myself during the day checking my attitude. I say, God, help me to be a light. God, help me to say what you want me to say. And I'll just sit there and just wait on God. And God said, go pray for that person. Go say something to that person. Just check on them. I'm like, but God, she's cool. She's fine. Go check on that person. And when I go over there and make small talk, then he says, now say this. And then ask them what you could pray for. I'm like, oh, okay. But we have to obey. It may not seem like it's making sense. But we have to remember that God's with us through it all. And he has the bigger picture. We only can see a glimpse of what he sees. But God sees the full picture. He sees the finish line. 
And we have to continue to wait on God, continue to obey. We must obey. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much. Lord God, help us to continue just to obey you. Help us to continue not to be anxious, not to get weary, not to get frustrated, but, but to continue to trust in you, to continue just to wait on you, to continue just to know that I'm not moving unless you say so. God, that we would stand firm on your word, that you would give us ears to hear what you're saying, Lord God, and we would do only what you want us to do. That we say, not my will, but your will be done. God, that we'll move our flesh out the way and allow you to order our steps, allow you to give us direction. God, that you just move in our lives, help us to continue to obey. God, maybe there's something you're telling us to do. God, help us to obey you. Help us to trust in you more. God, we ask that you just move in our lives like never before. God, we ask that you touch everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God, and that you would bless us, help us to go home safely, but never leave your presence. God, we just thank you right now. We give your name all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If that was